Manfred! Manfred! Anybody home? Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? S Scott? This is Scott! Oh, yes, of course. Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, about ten years, I guess. Oh, at my age, time means nothing anymore. I... I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. <laughs> How about you? Are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Oh, hello, young lady. Well, this, this calls for a celebration. I'm just the thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I, I saw a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. <laughs> Do an old man a favor, would you, Scott? Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Hello? Yeah, this is Manfred's. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Well, to old friends. I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. Well, let's have a look. Now, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter, Oh, please? sure, I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. Thanks. Well, let's see what this envelope has to say for itself. Hmm. The Royal Five. Hmm. Yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Hmm. Produced between 1907 and 1924. Yes. No doubt about it. It's a Royal Five. Are there many places around that could prepare one of these? I bought the company's entire stock of spare parts for a song in 64. Uh, well, they were going to take them to the dumpster, so I got the lot. <laughs> well, anybody around here who has one that actually works, has been to see me at one time or another. Do you keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes indeed. At least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Well, yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, if you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes and I'll be right back with the list. You think the killer's been here? 
If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. Manfred. Hello? Your call is locked, sir. A police car will be there in a few minutes. I need to know who you are, sir. Sir? Hello? <gasps> oh my god. He's dead. Oh. God, he's dead. Scott? Oh my God. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. The killer has already called the police. I think he wants us to be his scapegoats. We gotta get the hell out of here. What do you mean? We have nothing to do with his death. We were just here when it happened. Look, we're running out of time to find Sean Mars. The last thing we need is 24 hours in a police station explaining this whole thing. Well, so what do we do? Watch the front door. I'll get rid of our fingerprints from everything we touched since we came in. You better work fast. The police are going to be here any minute. What are you doing, Lord? If someone comes in, we're going to be in trouble. These are Manfred's account books. He must have been looking for owners of royals when he was killed. Forget it. we got to get out of here fast. Longer? The police will be here any second. I'm almost finished. That's it. We're done. You get all the prints? I got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from finding us. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? I'm taking you home. This is getting way too dangerous. No way. We're partners, remember? We had a deal. 
Listen, Lauren, I know you want to find the killer, but you're not helping me by putting yourself in danger. I'm not a child. I know what I have to do. I've got to find my son's killer. You're not going to stop me. You're going to be a good girl. You're going to go home and let me get on with my investigation. Stop the car. What? Stop the fucking car! Crap, I have no choice. I guess I'm doing this to protect her. This girl's stubborn as a mule. She doesn't let up, with or without me. Lauren! once again in my arms. What do you want? Oh, fuck it. I said a thousand times that I'd... Hey! Take it easy, man. Huh? Keep cool. <laughs> what do you want? Dope? Money? Tell me what you need. Sure we can make a deal, huh? God, I'm gonna blow your brains out, you son of a bitch! You think you come into my house and steal my gun? You'll be shooting up in hell, motherfucker! Whatever you want. Got dope? A cash? You, you want some dope? Please. Please don't kill me, man. I got children. These are my girls, see? This one's Sarah. And a little one. That's Cindy. 
Please, man. I want to see them again. Please. Please don't shoot. <laughs> I'm a father too. But I have no choice. <clears throat> Mad? It's Sam. I got your information. And the owner of the apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck-off surgeon. He used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did a few months in prison and was struck off the medical register. Interesting. Thanks for the information, Sam. I owe you one. Hey, Mad. Be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. The owner of the apartment where Ethan cut off his finger lives here. It's not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get Betropin. Without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. So, you're looking for Betropin, my dear. Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. Sure, why not?
I haven't seen you around here before. Who told you about me? I met a guy at a party. He popped some Betropin. Told me he got it from you. I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around Marble Street. Having some trouble? Didn't your mother ever warn you about accepting gifts from strangers? <laughs> Say hello to Matthew. He claimed he had come to the census. Another one of those goddamn government spies. So, you're interested in my Marble Street apartment. I rent it to my friend Paco, if you must know. I have no idea what he does there. Maybe that's where he fornicates with his dancers from the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> To be honest, I don't give a damn, because as long as he pays his rent, he can do whatever he likes. But enough with the chit-chat. I miss surgery, you see, so I take every opportunity to practice. I don't have any instruments here, so I use whatever comes to hand. I hope you won't hold that against me. Hold tight. This might sting a little. Have you ever noticed, as soon as you start to do a little housework, someone always comes calling? I'll get rid of our visitor and be right back. Don't move. I won't be long. Sir, I've come to bring you the word of the Lord in the form of these magnificent Bibles, which I will gladly leave with you in return for a contribution of only five dollars. No thanks, I love it. Come now, brother. I cannot believe the word of the Lord is of no interest to you. We, his humble flock, should walk in his steps, for St. John has said. Uh, thanks a lot. Mm.
Oh! <laughs> 